More protests in Belarus despite a government warning the police are now authorized to use lethal force if, as the officials say, necessary. The deputy interior minister said the anti-government protests had become radicalized. This from Aruna Ayenga. They came with flowers and with Bibles. It was now the turn of Minsk's pensioners to make their protests heard. Hundreds marched with messages like this. Grandmothers and grandfathers, let us help our children get a future. This was the response. And now President Lukashenko has given police extra powers to use combat weapons at protests. It is obvious they are trying to plunge Belarus into the chaos of the 1990s to force us to go through the sad path of the republics that have experienced colour revolutions. I declare that we will not leave the streets and will ensure order in the country. Employees of the internal affairs bodies and servicemen of internal troops, if necessary, will use special means and military weapons. Tens of thousands of Belarusians have demonstrated every weekend since the election in August. President Lukashenko was declared the winner, but his opponents say the vote was rigged. The president has been in power for 26 years and has turned to Russia for financial support to keep power. It hurts me that the authorities are doing God knows what to our children. I want our children to have a say, to have rights. They must be able to protect themselves. I want us to have a new free election and political prisoners to be freed. The Belarus protesters have been shortlisted for the Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought by the European Parliament. It honours those who defend human rights. But for these people, the battle is still to be won. Aruna Ayenga, BBC News.